Hello and welcome to today's edition of What the Heck is That? I'm your host and friendly neighborhood landscaper, Kyle, and today we're going to discuss bagworms, which is what you were looking at here. This writhing, wiggling little pile of leaves and sticks is actually a handful of bagworm caterpillars, or larvae. When these guys hatch in the spring, they find themselves a home that they're happy with. They start making this little protective case or bag for themselves to help them blend in and protect them from predators while they feed. And if you did the math on your own there real quick and thought, hey, those are worms and they're in bags, I wonder if that's why they call them bag worms. You get a thousand points because you are absolutely right. Nice work. Well, these guys are native. They can be found throughout the landscape, feeding on just about anything and everything. In their natural environment, in a well-balanced ecosystem, good biodiversity, they're typically not destructive. We really only see infestations of bagworms uh, in urban environments where we like to put their favorite foods all in one place in large quantities and then put them under stress. So these guys are very, very much attracted to things like spruce, juniper, arborvitae in urban landscapes where they are overwatered, underwatered, next to parking lots, next to the interstate, compacted soil, things like that. Those are easy targets for these guys. And if we've learned anything from the Discovery Channel, we've learned that the weak tend to be the first to go. The cheetah typically goes after the antelope with the gimpy leg that's not really paying attention as opposed to the biggest, strongest, and fastest antelope. So that is definitely true here as well. If you do have to control a bagworm population, you need to understand their life cycle, which is pretty weird, as if being worms in bags wasn't weird enough. These guys will shortly be done feeding. They will close their little cocoon and they'll begin to pupate which sounds really gross, but that just means that they are beginning the metamorphosis into becoming adults. And that happens in the fall. If you're a male, that's a happy day because you emerge as a moth with wings. You can fly. It's great. However, if you're a female, you pretty much have the most disappointing life in the insect world that I'm familiar with. Shorter fruit flies that only live for 24 hours. But anyway, a female bagworm wakes up, but she's still a caterpillar. And surprise, she doesn't have legs or a mouth or wings, and she never leaves the bag. She just waits for the male to come along, do his thing, and then she dies. And the eggs overwinter in that bag. And next spring, we have more of this. If you are unfortunate enough to have a large-scale infestation, and you do choose to intervene, uh, you can use a systemic insecticide, like a bifenthrin product, but you have to do it when they are actively feeding, otherwise they will not ingest the insecticide that you have applied to that plant tissue. Unfortunately, whatever else eats that plant will also die. So because of that potential for collateral damage, that's why pesticides should always be used responsibly, sparingly, and only as a last resort. One very effective option for bagworm control any time of year is you just pick them off and smash them. You can use a rock, a good jab, and these are just my suggestions. So get creative, knock yourself out, go crazy. I mean, you could use a bowling ball, baseball bat, ice pick, boil them in oil. If you really want to be thorough and fairly disturbing, you could always use a little tiny piece of piano wire, maybe squish each one of them with a pair of pliers one at a time. Incineration is a personal favorite as well. Um, shoot put them in a bucket and stick them in front of cnn for a while with all this going on in the news at the moment they probably just kill themselves so sky's the limit well i think that's all we've got for today here on what the heck is that thanks for joining us we'll see you next time